Hello and welcome to another Cables tutorial. Today it's again about interactivity and uh, I want to work on this example and um, show you how this works. So in this example we want to pick between thousands of spheres. So rendering thousands of spheres and, and testing which one the mouse is hovering over. And we are using this with a completely different technique than the um, intersections op, for example, we will use the new render to textures operator. And um, we are doing this basically completely on the GPU, so um, you can work with thousands of, of um, meshes here. Okay, um, let's start from zero. I will just create a little mesh instance. Uh, Uh, with a random numbers array with a hundred coordinates and I want to draw spheres. So let's size them. Let's not draw this one and create a nice material for it. So um, there we have them. So as I, as I was saying, I want to show how to do this with the render to textures operator. So this is a new version since the last update. Um, and this one makes the whole process much easier. So this one renders into multiple textures at the same time. So um, it's basically still the same uh, content, but you can, you can show different attributes of this content. So let's just look uh, how this works. So First of all, the first texture uh, is just our normal um, color texture with our PBR material. And um, when you click the render to textures up, you see there is an input called slots. And when I change this number, you see there's more uh, dropdowns getting activated. So this is the number of textures we are rendering to. So for each texture, I can change the method or like the output what it's uh, showing there so there's a lot of options here and there will be more i guess um, so you can choose the material id or the object id or like a position of uh, in the world um, to see this we need to create another this texture up and um, this is how this looks like so this is uh, the position in the world so each pixel the RGB values of each pixel are the X, Y, Z uh, coordinates of this pixel in the in the world. So there's other stuff like position local. So this is like a relative position in this sphere. Um, there is a position object. So this is the whole sphere is colored in X, Y, Z uh, values of the whole sphere, which is also handy sometimes. And there's more stuff like texture coordinates or just some. Uh, black or white color or something like this. Um, this can be used for different rendering techniques like uh, deferred rendering, for example. So there's also um, a normals output. So it shows you all the normals um, uh, of your meshes. And, but what we are interesting for uh, interactivity is the material ID, object ID, instance ID. So in the red channel, we have the material ID, in the green channel we have the object ID, and in the blue channel we have the instance ID of that mesh uh, that we are seeing there. So right now we have uh, 100 spheres on the screen. Oh, actually, let me bring them on the screen. Let's create a sequence and a full screen rectangle and render the uh, color output there. So there we have them. Um, so now what's in this texture, right? Um, so we have a hundred spheres and uh, the instance ID gives you really the ID of this instance. So it's really from zero to 100 uh, are the values. So we cannot render this because on the screen we always only see like values from zero to one. So this is why this is animated in a funny way because it just tries to show you that those values are out of this zero to one range. But we have a interesting, or we have a new way in the new vis texture operator to 
to debug those values, to bring them on the screen for and just analyzing them. So this option here, show color, you can enable. And then you see RGBA up here and you see this little crosshair. So this crosshair can be moved around and it shows you the RGB values uh, of this pixel underneath. So this is not only for data textures, can also be used for color grading uh, or whatever, if you are, uh, whenever you want to read back values from your textures. Um, so let's go back to the rendered textures. So what are we seeing here? RGBA 9139 means this this sphere or this pixel underneath has the material ID 90, uh, the object ID 1, and the instance ID 39. So this is the 39th uh, sphere or coordinate in this array, basically. So that's, that's pretty cool. So we have this information already there. Um, now, how can we work with this? Um, we can use uh, an operator that's called texture color pick. Um, this we want to connect to the second texture here and uh, connect a mouse operator to it. So we can just hover with our mouse and read back uh, the values directly. Um, this has to be switched to pixel. So now when we have our mouse, we see the RGB values uh, right here. So let's Click the blue one because the instance ID is the one that we are uh, mostly um, interested in and, and choose uh, extend title. So now we don't have to click the operator. You can just see here uh, what's the ID beneath my my mouse. So that's, that's pretty cool. So we can have a decision, okay, on the 10th sphere, uh, I want to show something on the screen, for example, or um, make some decision. Um, in most cases, we want actually to highlight the object. And, and this is something that we want to do now. Uh, we want to scale up the sphere that we are hovering over. Um, so we need to use this value and modify our mesh instance uh, to do this. So the mesh instance has an input that's called scale array and some array three. So it expects three numbers for each instance. So this is X, Y, Z. So you can scale them on the X, on the uh, Y and on the Z axis. But in our case, we always want to scale them in the same way because the sphere should not be like uh, not round anymore. Um, so let's just create a new array. And um, this should have the same size as the random numbers array. So we want 100 spheres. Um, so this way we have 100 values in here. And then we want to modify this. So this array, let's, let's have a look at it. So let's visualize this with a table. So this array always has uh, zeros. This is full of zeros, this array. So we want to change this array um, to have a one at the index of the currently hovered sphere. So we create an operator that's called set array set number. And um, you see there's a one now here. So if I change the index, you see the one is, is going down, up and down. And um, so this one we basically want uh, at our index of the hovering sphere. So we go here and we, we use the blue channel. So this is our index and connect this to index here. So now um, it's too many values. Now let's make it smaller. Let's just make 10 values. You see when I hover the, the one is just moving uh, to another uh, position there. So this is correct, right? So let's just connect this to scale array. So we get a warning now, scale array has wrong length. So this is because this array has 300 items in, uh, or has the length of 300, and this one has the length of 100. Um, so one way to change this um, is the array swizzle up. 
Um, so I'm working with uh, just this array because it's just easier for me because I just want 0, 0, 0 or 1, 1, 1 for each sphere, right? So I scale them to 0 or to 1, basically. So that's that's the idea. And then I want to make basically three copies of this array. So we have 0, 0, 0 and 1, 1, 1. So we can use this array swizzle up for this. So this works uh, like this. So you set the array stride. This is the array that's incoming. So right now we only have one value for each sphere basically and we want the result stride to be three because we want the xyz scale for each sphere we will visualize this in a moment um, so let me just connect this and then we play a bit with the numbers so so now i connected this and we only see one operator um, because this is because the default value uh, was zero so actually we want to set it to one by default and uh, with the set number to two uh, to scale it up. So now I can I can hover and you see we are scaling up the the right sphere here. Um, so yeah, that's that's pretty much uh, the example that we saw before, right? So okay, let's let's analyze this a bit. So this um, this swizzle, what is it doing? So it co it copies basically the incoming array. Is only uh, has the stride of one, so that means there's always x, 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 x in the in the array. So we take the x of this array, and we create an array that has a stride of three, and we put we always put uh, x in this slot. So if I change it to this, for example, you get another funny effect. Um, so and then you don't have round spheres anymore. So um, you you basically want it to do it this way. Um, probably we should do another tutorial on array swizzle. Um, uh, but yeah, it's super handy for like changing the format of your uh, of your array. Sometimes you want like uh, an array with only uh, a stride of one, or sometimes you want x y z coordinates, and sometimes you want a color with alpha channel, and then you need four uh, a stride of four. So this op really helps you to convert um, arrays into a different format. Um, but yeah, so now we are highlighting this sphere. Uh, we, we are scaling up the sphere that we are hovering right now. So that's pretty cool and uh, works pretty good. But you see sometimes it's flickering there. And this is because we are out of the meshes and we are in the background and then it still has the index zero but we are not over a sphere right now but our little array creator here doesn't know this so so how do we do this so as i said the the red channel contains a material id and the blue channel contains an object id so you can um, basically go anywhere in the patch and say get uh, material ID, uh, use this op get material ID, um, and it will um, give you an ID. So let's extend this. So this ID is the ID 90. So this PBR material with the mesh and sensor is the material ID 90. And this is what we see here in the red channel. So if we hover, you see there is a 90 in the red channel. So basically we only want to do this when it's really the right material. So we could also have multiple mesh instances and you want to differentiate them. And But the instances itself, they have IDs always starting from zero. So you can use this material ID to differentiate it. So basically what we'd want to do is uh, we want to see if red equals this material ID. And basically, if it does, we use an uh, if true then. So we would just want to trigger this because uh, that's super handy as I, as I will show. Uh, so um, there's an operator called set number on trigger. 
So we will only set our blue index into the array. Um, sorry, in this array when we are hovering over a material. Now you see when I go out of them, there's no flickering anymore, but the last one stays active. So, and this is why this triggering method is super handy because we can, we could, for example, create another set number on trigger and do this if it's not matching this material and set it to minus one, for example, and uh, set this number to minus one when we are out of an object. And then you see when we are not hovering anything, they just go back to uh, the normal size. And yeah, you can create different behaviors with those with this triggering or animate them or, or whatever. Um, but yeah, so this is what I wanted to show. If you have any questions, any anything that's unclear, just just write them in the comments and let us know. And um, I will publish the example. And yeah, thank you for listening. Bye bye.